And so I started using self heal for hypertension and it is my go-to. It's the first herb I use. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. I've been looking forward to having Caro on the show for a very long time. I met Caro about five years ago at the International Herb Symposium. A friend of mine told me that I absolutely had to meet her, so she introduced us and we sat down for a conversation. Caro immediately dived in deep. This was no small talk whatsoever, and that conversation has made a lasting impression on me. And so I'm excited to share Caro with you all, to share her healing wisdom. We touched on many important subjects in this episode. For those of you who don't know her already, Caroline Gagnon is a clinical herbalist practicing for 30 years. She's co-founder and director of Flora Medicina, which offers a variety of classes and a five-year in-depth online herbal training program created to inspire and deeply educate French-speaking students from around the world. Caroline weaves plant energy, science, TCM, Ayurveda, somatic experiences, and energetics into her work. Caroline offers private sessions accompanying people in their healing journey that explores the soul's needs linked to our body, of addressing psychic, emotional, and physical ailments, and transgenerational issues in a joyful and magical way. I'm so excited to have you here, Caro. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to have this moment with you and chat. Uh, me too. And I'm also, I really wanted to say bienvenue and I forgot. So I'm just going to say it now. Bienvenue. <laughs> um, I have been wanting to have you on the podcast for so long. So this is a dream to sit down with you. And um, let's dive right in to hearing about your journey as an herbalist and as a healer. Okay. Uh, well, I started, I was very young. I was 19. And I I just came back from India. I didn't know what to do. I was not going to go to university. And I loved so many things. And I was so curious. And I lived in my tent. And I moved to Victoria, BC. And I had helped to build like a path through the, the, the rainforest, the virgin rainforest. And, and then somebody talked about a class. And I went to that class with Carol McGrath. She she lived by a, pa- a little park, and then I had this class, and then I remember when I stepped out of that class, it was it was like I stepped into my path, mm-hmm. and I could see myself. I saw literally saw myself doing this until I was like ninety something, like like for my life. And then from that point on, I dreamt about herbs every night, and I would open the books, and like. I would I would have the picture and the knowledge of the plant, but I didn't know the name. And then I would try to figure out what that plant was and the name was, and it and it was what I dreamt about. So it was like this download of information. It's like remembering the herbs. Mm-hmm. And so I did an apprenticeship, and then I I moved back to Montreal, and then I studied Chinese medicine. I just studied, studied, studied. Um, um, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, biochemistry, and started practicing really early on too. And the people that I, I would have as clients, they had like all those really complicated issues that none of the herbal books would talk about, like Addison's disease, like uh, autoimmune disease. I had like AIDS was big at the time in the early nineties. And like, 
there was no protocol. There was no recipe for AIDS or all those like, and I had a lot of people with genetic issues, which is interesting because I had to figure out how to address problems that weren't from like a protocol point of view, but to like understand the plant, understand the physiology. And also I would kind of go deep into my physiology to understand how things function and how they related to one another and how things would, um, how the processes happen so that there was this self-regulating intelligence system. So really like a lot of deep introception, like a deep listening of myself, of my clients. And so with every client I learned, I learned, I learned. Mm -hmm. And I still feel like I'm a baby herbalist, like 30 something years later. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since that first class, that's, that's been my life in so many ways and doing community work in the 90s. Uh, I helped start this um, uh, Sevrage withdrawal program for young people who were on heroin with herbs. Mm -hmm. And so, and then bringing, um, you know, working with street people and bringing them to learn about the plants that, you know, grew in the city. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I did so many things. I had amazing big gardens, which I don't have anymore. And then Two years ago, I there was I saw something on Facebook and it, it was it became my mantra. It says, "You can do anything, but you cannot do everything." <laughs> <laughs> I agree so, with myself a lot too. <laughs> I know. So I started to, you know, cut down on some of my herbal activities and you know bought two kayaks and uh, you know mm -hmm. having time for myself and um and and also I started a school in 1999 which is online since 2012 so uh Flor flora medicina it's a french uh, herbal online classes and a whole program which is five years and a half to wow. to to become a herbal uh clinician yeah mm -hmm. but just i mean like you know, we're we're with the herbs in so many ways, and and like the sharing of them, and working with kids, and dreaming with them, and journeying with them, and tasting them, and you know, growing them, and making all like I'm not, I don't love making things with them because I don't like cooking that much, but I've tried everything, but it's not. I just like I feel like I'm I'm more like a deer. I go into the forest and then I pick and I, eat and I, <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's funny. I also do not like cooking, which might surprise people because I do create a lot of recipes, but I yeah. love, I love recipe creation. So I yeah. create the recipe yeah. and then I hand it off to yeah. my handsome French husband who then becomes the, the cooker of the thing. <laughs> exactly. I love formulating. And yeah. I think I'm pretty good at formulating. That would be something I would love to like formulate for. A company or something I mm. did that and I but and I love that like creating that just that perfect mix and harmony and yeah it's like a dance and then you give it and you're like here you go <laughs> yeah oh well Kaho, I want to go to the 90s where we have you as this young person and you're working with very serious cases like working with um just very real situations, like you mentioned, autoimmune yeah. diseases, AIDS, uh, working with, you know, people are dealing with, you know, not being housed. How is that, like, as a 20-year-old? Like, did, like, I hear that, like, this was a calling for you, and it was a remembrance. Oh. Like, did you deal with imposter syndrome, or did you of just, course. like, yeah? Of course, and I still do, in a sense, like, because, I mean, the herbs, they humble you. Like they have, if you're not there, then there's something wrong. Like you are humble in the face of a healing journey of, um, of just like the intelligence of them. Like I still, like, I will talk about self heal. I'm still learning about self heal. And I'm, I think like I'm the apostle, apostle of self heal. Like I've, I'm, I'm obsessed with self heal. And every year I still learn something new about her. 
But the thing that, um, and also when I started, there weren't that many herbalists. I didn't, I, mm-hmm. two, you know, in Quebec that were like clinical herbalists. It wasn't really a practice. Mm-hmm. And so I really always went into this thing as like, well, I don't know if I can help you. Maybe I can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, willing to learn and also just being very curious. But the thing that helped me to go, um, and continue this, even if my confidence was not there, was the fundamental belief that the herbs are amazing Mm -hmm. and that they will do something, anything. You know, they might not cure you, but they will help you in some way. So it was that deep, unwavering faith in the Mm -hmm. herbs that kept me going despite my imposter syndrome and my doubts and my blah, blah, blah. And of course I had, I, you know, I had all my defense mechanism and I would, you know, overstudy like most herbalists do. And, <laughs> and you know, being in avoidance and, you know, calling back some clients if I'm like, well, but, you know, when people would, and I've, I've never looked for clients. I've always had more clients than I could take even when I was in my early 20s but it was more like okay let's let's see and always being curious and excited to learn that's I think was my like like the wind under my sail you know Mm -hmm. holding through that course Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Mm -hmm. thank you well self-heal is one of my most very favorite herbs and I feel like one that is often either, I don't want to say overappreciated, but is maybe like so far generalized, you know, like it has the like the heal all. And so it becomes this like general thing. And then like the specifics of it are lost within that. Or more commonly, it's just not recognized as for the amazing being that it is. So I'm excited to hear from you about this amazing plant. Yeah, that was my view of it. Like they... It wasn't used like when I looked at Western herbalist books, it was like, well, we used to take self heal for this and that, but really like a side note, Mm -hmm. but like this plant called me. And the thing is, I, I, well, I studied Chinese energetics and they used it in a very different way, which was not for wound healing, healing. And I rarely use self heal for wound healing. Mm -hmm. But it just really um, impressed me that two cultures would use the same herb for totally different things. And so that told me that, well, we don't know a lot about herbs. Like we know, you know, only a little aspect of them, but not the whole of them. I think none of us. We know know. one of their stories, but not all of their stories. Exactly. exactly. So, and then I was looking at through um, when the internet came about because it wasn't there when I started. <laughs> it was very, very flimsy. But then I, I got to read some studies about self-heal. And one of them was, uh, it was a study made, done on dogs, if I remember. And it, they, they saw that it had a hypotensive effect. And I was like, huh, interesting. And so I started using self-heal for hypertension and it is my go-to. It's the first herb I use and it's all my formulas for hypertension, depending on what type of hypertension and what's the etiology. Is that how you say it? It, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I would add other herbs, but, and I have amazing results for that. And also testing it on myself. I got really sick a few uh, years ago, maybe, um, yeah, 10 years, more than almost 15 years ago from a formaldehyde poisoning. And it was really hard to get out of my system. And it really um, affected my dura and my nervous system. And I had like fibromyalgia symptoms and my thyroid crashed. And well, that's like most healers we have (laughs) our (laughs) healing journey Mm -hmm. but sometimes I would get like you know when your liver is really not well and you have sand in your eyes Mm -hmm. and I would just drink self-heal and after five minutes my eyes were clear my Mm -hmm. head was clear so 
really an amazing liver herb and that's underutilized also for the liver like as a hepatic and also because some of the clients that i've seen over the years and some of them who had taken anti-malarial drug it was really harsh and there or other meds that really affected their liver like permanently and they can't take even dandelion it's too much for their liver everybody uh like their body accepts Mm self-heal so it's a very gentle but profound hepatic Mm -hmm. and the other thing is and you probably know that about me and obsess about the lymph the lymphatic system and that's one thing i do know about you yes (laughs) so i've so i've explored when i you know read about the self-heal and that it did have a lymphatic effect mostly affecting the um, upper resp- respiratory tract. So I started using it with uh, p- with kids that had uh, adenoids, oh. swollen adenoids, oh. and were snoring or mouth breathing. And before they had them remove, I used self-heal. And for most of them, they did not need to go through the, the surgery. Wow. And of course, there's usually uh, a uh, food intolerance that's underneath. And also with chronic ear infection, I had, I was working with, um, uh, I don't know the name in English, people who work with children who have speech issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, speech and so there was this little kid who had had 50 ears infection and antibiotics and had speech problem because her ears were blocked since she was a little baby. And so I put, I love working for the upper respiratory tract with self-heal, plantain, and uh, ground ivy. Oh. And it usually clears everything. So there's that. It really lowers the histamine uh, secretion in your body. So for anything where there's too much histi- histamine and allergies, seasonal allergies, and I pair it with plantain, it is such an amazing antiviral. Mm-hmm. And, and I have a lot of clients with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue kind of became my, my spe- one of my specialties after I got so sick. And I kind of understood it from my body perspective. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's, I could see why a body will not self-regulate for 30 years. It's like there's, it, everything's yeah, haywire. And uh, so uh, in chronic fatigue, there's often an underlying chronic viral infection. So for those opportunistic viral infection, I use self-heal like as a base, and then I'll add other other herbs. But then st- studies came out of with self-heal like for herpes. And, and then when COVID hit, I was like, oh, Self-heal must be really amazing for that. And then there's a great study from a uh, uh, university in Canada, in Manitoba, that came out that proved that, that not only did it did it help for, the, for SARS-CoV-2 to, to not penetrate the cell, but also self-heal regulates the immune system, regulates the cytokine response, which can go haywire. So even if it's not a great anti-influenza, antiviral, because it helps to modulate the immune system, I usually put that in in my mix. And then there was a great study on uh, self-heal on Ebola. It's it's even good for Ebola and uh, HIV and like herpes and so many other viruses. So there's also like those opportunistic viruses, viral loads that come when you're very fatigued. Those are, you know, that come with a chronic chronic fatigue syndrome. But liberantitis, you know, when you're all dizzy. And, uh, and so usually, you know, there's something with the liver. But, and people can have that condition for months. But when I use self-heal with Bravensari and, and essential oil, usually I clear, we clear that with like one or two weeks. Wow. Yeah. It's just amazing. Wow. And that's the thing with self-heal. I was like, okay, so works with the lymph 
And I really felt that it helped clear my head with the uh, with the formaldehyde because it's when there's something in your brain, it's hard to clear it. And so I I would feel it draining through my um your you know the liquid I the cerebral fluid, and then I so I thought okay there's something that helps to clear selfie helps to clear that. And then in 2010, there was this new discovery about the lymphatic system of the brain, right? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's my link. So mm. uh, my hypothesis, I think I, it's more that I, I think it does that, that uh, selfie really helps that lymphatic system, that lymphatic system of the brain. Mm. And also because I, I saw that it helped the lymph and this whole ears, nose, throat area, I started to work with uh, self-heal with people who had glycoma. And then I think a few years later, they linked glycoma with lymph issues yeah. too. So there's that. Wow. And also um, it's, it's a very great anti-inflammatory and anti well more like as a baseline because it it's such a great antioxidant and anti-cancer so amazing plant for for prevention it's like i think we should all take self-heal every day that's and like all also, i can think about right now is i just want to go take self-heal <laughs> i often have that when i have guests on i'm like i need this herb right now but right now yeah. i need this herb yes <laughs> Yeah. And, and it's, it's such a happy herb. It's like, it's, it shines. It's, and it's so humble. Like it, I, that's and, the thing it, that really gets to me about self feel is how yeah. humble it is because you think of like, let's think about it like an antiviral, like, um, like gusticum or oregano, like they have these incredible strong aromatics. Like you taste yeah. that herb and you know, like, yeah. Ooh, this is strong medicine. And self heal is so unassuming and so humble and so powerful. Yeah. But that's the beauty of our ancestors. Like even in French, there's a, a an old name for they say Brunel, but it's toute bonne, like the all good. Mm -hmm. And I think like an old English name was like the heart of the earth. So wow. our ancestors, like they saw, they understood self-heal and how profound it worked with us. And when you, you journey with that plant and you meditate with it, it really goes where it needs to go. And it shows you where you need to work. And it's, it's, it's very soft and profound. Mm -hmm. And I just want to talk about that other thing with the brain. Cause, um, we we're going to talk about that concussion, concussion, um, formula. So I started using self heal to work on brain issue and brain trauma. And I just saw as I was preparing for that, I'm like, is there something new to learn about self heal? And there's new studies in 2023 and 2022, as a prevention for dementia, and even help to recover memory, because it, it helps in the hippocampus to, you know, prop up dopamine and other neurotransmitter and it, it it really helps the brain to enhance memory and to protect the memory and to reduce the neuroinflammation which i think causes eventually all those different types of of degenerative neural neurological things so of course you know turmeric is like the big shot thing but you know and the the sad thing is it's really hard to find on the market self-heal that, that was one of my questions for you actually how do you find your self-heal yeah i think gaia herbs does self-heal or well some 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 herbal lines hold self-heal but you just have to i just keep talking about selfing self-heal and educating people about it and eventually it comes from in the market you have to ask your your herbal mm -hmm. producer to do like just to harvest it and, and to mm -hmm. tincture it and it's great in tincture but it's it works amazingly well in infusion too that yeah. was another question i have well, let, let's back up just a little bit yeah. um i do want to say that a couple years ago now so i'm not maybe current but i know mountain rose herbs was like um 
helping a farm start a self-heal production. So I'm kind Yay. of hopeful, but, you know, but it takes years and it's kind of interesting look at the industry of like what it takes, you know, and mountain reserves is like, you know, putting out money out there to like support the startup of this to get it going. Um, so we'll see as far as I know, and I could be wrong on this, but I don't think the mountain reserves is selling self-heal, but you know, no. they just this week, they announced um, they were selling bee balm, which is the first time I've seen bee balm, the Monarda fistulosa in like a major, you know, place. So just in that, you know, in like how many years have I been talking about bee balm and saying, why is this not in commerce? Cause it is easy to grow and it's sustainable. Yeah. And, um, and, and it's, it's native in North America. One. Yeah. So we need not harvesting it, but to grow it specifically sustainably for, a larger market. So that was exciting to see that. And yeah, I hope that self heal. I actually like last, it was last year, like around this time. So, it, you know, the garden's not going, I was like mad for self heal. I really wanted it. And so I went on like Etsy. I mean, I went everywhere looking for it and all I could get was like on Etsy, there was like, you know, um, I, like I would get these tiny packages for like $6, you know, it's just like, it's like barely even like one cup of tea. Um, but that's like all I could find was in those tiny amounts. Um, so. But the yeah. great thing with self heal and sustainable harvest, that's like, I really encourage people to use the herbs that grow, you know, that are abundant and yeah. the places that self heal grows is on lawn. We just have to, yeah. you know, we have to get it going. Yeah, it was one of my just, big projects. I am definitely in like I'm this year was my best year ever of saint of self heal. So I'm just really working on it. And I really learned this year too, which is true of so many plants, but not all. But the more I picked, the more it kept flowering. So I was really, you know, every couple of days while it was growing, I was out there harvesting more and more. And it was my a, still a small harvest, but the most abundant yet. So working on it. So I have a field around my house and I go and I mow part of the field. And that is the perfect place for self-heal. So I cultivate self-heal by mowing parts of my field. Hmm. And so, you know, teaching people where to, to just not mow the whole lawn and keep patches of self-heal and uh, harvest it and tincture it or yeah, dry let's, it. Let's talk, and, about, let's talk about that too. Do you yeah. like to, do you have a preference on tincturing it fresh or dried? I, uh, when I, cause I love the tea. So if I dry myself heal, usually I, you know, I keep it for tea, but there's, uh, the way the Chinese use it is really like the brown spike when the, when the spike is very tall and brown. So when I tincture my, my self heal, cause there's studies showing, well, one thing is like the Chinese used it for real, really for liver yang rising you know when you get those headaches at the end of the day and your cheeks are red and you know the, the children go very hyper and then you give them self-heal and then they calm down and some even for false he heat that you get through menopause some of my clients they take self-heal and they don't have night sweats like mm -hmm. it just really cools down your system and um, so the Chinese, they use it for that. But then the studies, they show us stuff that self-heal can do that we've forgotten. I don't even know if we ever used it for that. And sometimes it's in the stem, in the leaves. So I take the whole aerial part mm -hmm. and I, I just think like the, the purple of the flower, there's, there's something so vibrant in it. So I mix all that in my tincture. Okay. So I take the leaves, I take some brown sp spikes, I take some, you know, like when the, the flowers at, at its apex and it's just like, mm, you want to be a bee and just go in it. that. <laughs> I want that vitality in my tincture too. So I, I just mix all that. And, you know, I, and I have great results. So I'm, I'm sticking to that recipe. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's really interesting. I've mostly done the flowering tips myself. So now I'm excited to add some more to that. I also, I just happen to prefer teas most of the time. And in Chinese medicine, they use self-heal in very large dosages. And so I've, yeah. I've been a little like suspicious about self-heal in a teacher, which is just like my background of, I first studied Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, which tend to use much larger dosages. So it's just kind of my bias. Um, 
that I understand is not everybody's experience, but it is my bias. So I'm curious about the tea and how much you use and uh, that's well, it always depends on the problem. If sure. it's something you're going to use for the whole, you know, for a few years, you can't take that amount every day. Mm -hmm. It's just it's and it's hard Chinese to medicine. Find. I've seen up to like four ounces a day of the herb, yeah. not the water. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah. incredible. Well, and then herb. It's a really good and a lot of the lamiaceae's that don't have that much volatile oils to really like what um oh gosh, I forgot her name. The Appalachian Phillips light Philip Phillip. Nancy Phillips. No, no, I forgot her name. Well, she was taught to really boil them down. Like to make oh, a very uh, concentrated mm -hmm. uh, reduction. And so for cancer, that's what I would use. Mm -hmm. But, and for when there's head trauma, it's one of the herbs that I use. And I Fill suggest a half a light. teaspoon twice a day of the tincture. Okay. So, yeah, sometimes it's a herb you can take in high dosage. It's mm -hmm. not toxic at all. Mm -hmm. and, but the thing is, like, even for your wallet or your, you know, <laughs> taking all your summer harvesting it and it goes out for a month and you still want it for the whole, you know, the whole mm -hmm. winter. It's like, well, when you get the effect, then you know that's how much you need to do it. Like for mm -hmm. my liver and my eyes, when they had this grit, mm -hmm. just like a normal tea with a teaspoon of the herb, it did mm -hmm. that. So I don't mm -hmm. need to add more. Like I mm -hmm. see it in my body. It works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, think, I love that. The practical guide to dosage. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was very, I couldn't, that name that you said, I was like, I know, I know, I know. And it's Phyllis Light, I think is, is that. Phyllis Light. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Can't forget Phyllis Light. <laughs> um, do you? I don't ever... know if she used herself heal, but she would do that like uh, a slow decoction not too high until it reduces of um skull cap until it turns like almost orangey red and it's such a powerful thing mm -hmm. so i do that sometimes with my herbs i see um yeah do you ever use self-heal as an oil an infused oil i don't i have this i'm cursed with oils oh they all turn <laughs> huh <laughs> I feel like I want to be like, come over to my kitchen, Carol. Let's do the oils together. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I, you know, I might do them. It's just you have to go every day, and and I'll do every summer. I'll do my Saint John's work, and I've done them all. But I, I just get the herbs from friends who do them, the oils, and uh, <laughs> and uh, but I haven't tried the self heal in oil. It's like my next thing, probably. But I haven't tried it externally. Yeah. Yeah. I I love it, but I can't say that I have the the clinical experience at this point to say, you know, that it does this or that, but I love I love my oils. So I use it as a nourishing oil and um Yeah, know. I would I would use it also like probably as a lymph massage. That's what I use it as. Yeah. 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 Oh, self-heal. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. so much about it. Do you have any other self-heal insights to share with us? Well, I, I don't use it for diabetes or for uh, regulation of glucose, but it has an effect for that. I don't think it's like the best, mm. but it does that. Oh, yeah, there's this great study. Maybe that's why I was so uh, interesting. I had hyperthyroidism when I was in my early 20s, and then I had hypothyroidism. I was never medicated for it, so I worked with herbs and you know, journeying and meditation and <laughs> invoking whatever. <laughs> to, it was really such a journey, but it had. There's a study on self heal and Hashimoto thyroid disease, and it affects. It really, it's really interesting what it does, and they saw like the mechanism of where it it works literally on the antigen of uh, your your autoimmune antigen and reduces it. And uh, so that's another great thing because it's hard to balance right away before there's uh, too much damage to the thyroid. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a great herb to add mm -hmm. to your mix. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. 
And so when you're thinking, you know, we've talked about all of these different gifts of self-heal and different ways to work with self-heal in terms of the tincture versus tea. Do you have any preferences of when you, you would use a tincture versus a tea? Is that something you let your clients basically decide or are there times where you well, would just dramatically prefer one over the other? Sadly, I only use tincture because all the self-heal that I dry, I use it for myself. Yeah. And as you saw, it's practically impossible to find dry, like really good dry self-heal mm -hmm. if you haven't dried it yourself. Yep. So for that, just for that reason, I don't often recommend it as a tea. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So it works great as a tincture then as the takeaway. <laughs> Yeah. And even, you know, if you only had dried and you prefer tincture just for the convenience of it, you could, mm -hmm. you know, tincture dried self-heal and it, it would be very, very good. And self-heal, like, is different than the other Lamiaceae's from the mint family that are very finicky to dry. Self-heal, you could dry in the back of your car and it would still be great <laughs> and very yeah. efficient. Yeah. yeah. It's well, just speaking of, <laughs> yeah, it is. It truly is. It is. So speaking of tinctures, let's talk about your tincture formula for a concussion yeah. protocol because this is yeah. really interesting. Well, the thing with concussion, and I've had a lot of clients in the past few years with head trauma and, yeah, like mild concussion and big concussion. And sometimes I had a client. She was a dancer. She had it was like constant concussion. And every concussion that you have, it's like exponential, the effect. Yeah. And yeah. even if you had a little one when you were five, you, we, we could still see it in your brain if we imaged your brain. Wow. So it's undertreated. And I've had clients who, who came to me like two, three years after their concussion and we started working with the plants and they they improved radically hmm. within a month. Like hmm. they could start multitasking, which they couldn't before. Or, you know, when you talk and you write or you somebody talks to you and you're writing and you can't you can't do that after a concussion. And also you become the thing is a concussion um you know, kickstarts an immune response in your in your brain from the glial glial cell, the cellular glial. How do yeah. you say that in English? I think glial. that's right. Glial cells, yeah. Glial cells, and it creates a neural inflammation, and your blood brain barriers becomes more per permeable. And the thing is, with many things in our lives, there's still some like we. A lot of people have subacute neuroinflammation, which causes, you know, many problems and eventually neurodegeneration. And so it's really important to heal the brain properly. And it's like a, an invisible injury. Like when your arm is broken, you see it. But when your brain has been injured, you just feel off and you have nightmares and your sleep patterns get distorted and your cognitive function are not on top and your emotional um, states fluctuate and you can even have like severe depression like we see in with people who do sports and had concussion so important to tr to help your brain if you have had a concussion and have not been treating it which is just it's it, it, Treating it by just resting and not watching TV is not enough. And there are no meds. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any drugs, pharmaceutical drugs that help heal the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about the herbs. Mm -hmm. So self-heal is part of it. It's usually I would uh, tell people to uh, take equal part Bacopa which is really good for neuroinflammation too and rebuilding brain tissue, literally. Uh, go to cola, which helps the brain, but also helps to heal the blood-brain barrier and self-heal to help calm down the immune response of the brain after the, the maybe not like I'll, I'll leave two weeks and then start adding 
the the formula and of course uh, lion's mane which will help also regrow the tissue and then you know many other herbs like turmeric and other yeah, herbs you mentioned are, ashwagandha yeah ashwagandha exactly but self heal self heal does something that the other herbs don't do and that's probably because it helps the glymphatic system also mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much, Kaho, for sharing your love of self heal and oh, sharing so many of the gifts of self heal pleasure. with us. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we move on, I'd love to hear about what kind of herbal projects you have in your life right now. Um, I have. Uh, well, I my practice as a therapist is really evolving, <laughs> and this is really exciting. I feel like it's blossoming because I'm opening other other ways of working with herbs and people and really going more and more into a journey of of all of who they are and the healing deepens like the healing journey really goes into roots that I I'm always surprised like how amazing um amazing we are as human and living beings and how our bodies and soul really knows how to heal and what is needed. And so really holding that container for them and using herbs. Of course, there's like that 30 years of practicing herbalism. So I know what works well. And so that goes, that goes fast, but to really accompany people. So my, and because I have a school, I have a herbal school. There's a lot of time spent in teaching and just, having you know employees or everything so this past year I've been really um setting up my time to make space for my clinical practice which I I couldn't for the you know the past five years so this really lights up my heart mm -hmm. and uh yeah seeing clients who want to go into that deep journey and explore um yeah, other avenues of of their healing journey, which is everything. It could be transgenerational. It's just there's it's it's limitless. Yeah. And is this um, um are you seeing people only in person or do you do no. long distance? No, I have clients from in Europe, in the States, and Canada and yeah. Hawaii and yeah, from Wonderful. all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also I will be teaching in uh, just in the outskirt of Boston. Uh, some of that work, it's, uh, there's not a title, but it's like somatic intelligence healing or working with the body uh, as a, with the intelligence of the body as a herbalist. So really working with the herbs and journeying with them and, you know, getting into contact in, with the body of your client so that it tells you what it needs and uh, yeah, opening up to that life force that understands and knows more than our brains. Mm. So we can have all the knowing and the, you know, studied so many things and so many years, but truly the person is the one who knows what is needed to heal. So how to tap into that and help that person to access it so that they can self-regulate again yeah. and heal. So it's I love in, that, Kaho, because it's just yeah. so much more profound and magical and ultimately effective than being like, take turmeric for inflammation. Yes. You know, like that is one type of herbalism. <laughs> but yeah. you're talking about this other thing, which is an incredible healing journey and really respecting um, our innate intelligence and our innate ability to heal, which is more profound, again, than just saying, you know, take this herb for that problem, for example. Yeah, well, it's it's really not symptomatic healing. Mm -hmm. And the thing is when you, and, but the, the journey becomes, it's so joyous and magical and deep. And it's like reconnecting to parts of yourself that, that are just wonderful because we're all wonderful. And every cell of us is intelligent and divine and knows. And so each time I accompany someone in that journey, like I learn about stuff about life, about the body. And it's just 
it's just an infinite journey of beauty and and fun and even when we you know we we give space for the trauma we don't we never need to go back into the trauma we need to go into that healing force that you know knows it's hard to put into words because it's it's like something you feel and you are so yeah so you have to come and take a class <laughs> yeah yeah so if people want to take your class in boston which will be in english or if they want yeah. to work with you on their own personal healing journey i know you have your website uh in french but what is the best way people who are english speakers can get in touch with you well they can email me and i yeah they can email me at, and i think you'll link the email we might as well say your email here. And yeah, it's uh, C A R O Caro at Flora F L O R A Medicina M E D I C I N A dot com. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, for a session and for the for the the class, the weekend class on somatic intelligence and plant journeying. And it will be very experiential, mm -hmm. fun weekend. And um, it's in it's on uh, June 8 and 9th. And to get more info about that, you have to reach the Boston School of Herbal Studies. And I'm not sure about their website, but I think it's bostonherbalstudies.com. But if you Google the Boston School of Herbal Studies, then you should you should find it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know people will be listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube for a very long time to come. So that is 2024 that this yeah, class is coming up. Yeah, 2024. And my other project, which I, maybe I should get some coaching from you. because I had this YouTube channel 12, 15 years ago that I started, but the, really my work has been, has been shifting into like a whole other area of herbalism and dimension of accompanying people and healing. And it's really what I want to talk about. This is all I want to do really every day. Mm -hmm. And it just brings joy to my soul. And um, yeah, it brings me into this, the magical place of the world. And, mm -hmm. and it just makes sense. Everything makes sense. Cause, cause you hook into like, this big vast knowledge of everything mm -hmm. that knows and is perfectly aligned. So this is really what I want to do. So I wanted to, you know, maybe by the time you listen to this, there will be a channel about that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So you'll be working on your continuing to work on your YouTube channel for that, which we will link exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wonderful. I'm just, I'm so grateful that you exist in the world and that you're sharing your gifts with us in such beautiful ways. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for being with me today. And yeah, well, before we go, I'm not letting you off the hook that easily. Okay. Oh, yeah. I There's a lot still question. have your uh, one last question, which um, I'm leaving it up to you and your final thoughts. Well, that's the thing like that, like to really, I, the thing with, herbalism and that's why I started my school was like uh we need herbalists the world needs herbalists the world need that needs that medicine and so many herbalists study until the cows come home and don't practice and don't offer this medicine to other people because they feel they're not enough or they're scared that or they feel they have the obligation to cure, mm -hmm. but you're not the one that cures anything. The person cures themselves. Like even the plants don't cure anything. The plants inform the person to, you know, maybe nudge them in a direction. It's like, I always say, when you put comfrey on a dead man's wound, it won't heal. Mm -hmm. So what heals is that life force that's beneath that. So being like, there's, there's so much humility in herbalism and, and that's good. That gives me confident in a practitioner. If you're humble, I'm like, okay, you'll do good because you'll listen. And as herbalists, we're really taught to listen, to listen to the earth, to listen to the plant, 
to be in relationship with the herb, to be in relationship with the earth, and to be in relationship with the person you are, to really listen. And we are people who practice with our hearts. And so maybe there's not a lot of, of that as a role model in the healthcare world, but this is truly what heals. Mm -hmm. And my teacher, Carol McGrath, she said, uh, how do you say entremetteur? You know, those people who arrange marriage, like the, the person who, the matchmaker, matchmaker, you know? So a herbalist is really a matchmaker with like the earth, the plant and the person that they're meeting and to, you know, practice, practice, find, you know, a coach. And I, I know you did that for a while, Rosalie, right? Like mm -hmm. to, to just, to step out and offer your medicine. And also the plants are a medicine that you're offering, but you as a human being is the medicine also that you're offering and to trust that and to trust that you have an impact and people need care. And we're, as herbalists, we're very caring and there's a thousand ways to practice herbalism, you know? So just go out and offer to the limit, you know, that, that you have, but to offer the herbs, mm -hmm. offer yourself. Thank you. That's such beautiful words and wisdom. I, I said this off camera, but when I think of you, Kaho, I, I think of you as a healer and you just, you do like, just as you said, you heal in so many ways and you offer so much to the people um, who you care for. So thank you so much for those, those powerful words. I feel like I could almost become a clinical herbalist again, just listening to you. So yeah. I'm sure there's <laughs> other people who are listening who are feeling that too. They're like, oh yeah, that is my calling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like people say, oh, but there's another clinical herbalist. I'm like, there's not a lack of sick people in the world. Unfortunately, and, yes, that is true. you know, herbs, we, they help us to just not, not be sick. They help us to thrive. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how I would live without herbs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, I don't know how people live without herbs. Mm -hmm. They don't, they make me feel alive and good and just like there's something right in the world when I get up in the morning when they're with me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what we give and it becomes this normal thing. It's like ordinary thing, but mm -hmm. just to, to acknowledge the extraordinary of all of them and that like people don't have that in their lives. And so when you give that, you change lives and you help them thrive. And we all need to like step out of surviving and just, and start thriving. And I think the herbs, they're really, they're really a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, well said. I feel I'm going to leave this conversation feeling very inspired. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalie. As always, thanks for being here. Don't forget to head over to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to download your beautifully illustrated recipe card and to get a transcript of this show. There you'll also be able to sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is the best way to stay in touch with me. The best way to check out Caroline's offerings in French is at floramedicina.com. If you'd like more herbal episodes to come your way, then one of the best ways to support this podcast is by subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. I'd also love to hear your comments about this episode. What were your biggest takeaways? What are your thoughts on self-heal? I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. 
Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes, and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. Well, as you know by now, I love self heal, and I also have a solo episode about self heal that you can check out. Caro shared so many amazing gifts of self heal, and I'm excited to share yet another in this herbal tidbit. Self heal extracts have been shown to reduce excess estrogen, and researchers hypothesize that it may have the potential to address estrogen dependent cancers. There was a human clinical trial involving patients with breast cancer. 424 people were split into two groups. One group received conventional treatment alongside a self heal extract, and the other group received conventional treatment and a placebo. Those taking self heal had fewer side effects from the drugs and fewer deaths over a period of three years. The researchers concluded that self heal may be a potential adjuvant medicine for breast cancer treatment. Do you have self heal growing near you? If you do, I hope you enjoy harvesting and making medicine with this fabulous plant. <music>